Welcome to FM On Demand. I'm your host, Becky Schilling, and I am very excited to be with Alicia Wright from Fulton County Schools. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Becky. So um, exciting to be here. I I'm excited to see you. I met you a couple of years ago at a FAME uh, Awards reception when you were honored, so it's nice to catch up with you. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Well, you and I were just talking that tomorrow, today is uh, March 12th, that tomorrow, March 13th, was the day your district shut down a year ago. What, what's the past year been like? The past year has been, um, the past year has been one for the record books, I would say. It, every day has been different. We started out the year, we started out, I, I would say on March 16th, um, serving meals for our students right away, and we have not stopped. Um, we have been able to take advantage of serving um, over the weekends. We've been able to take advantage of serving during the holidays. The main thing that we wanted to make sure is that our kids did not receive any interruption in meal service. And um, due to the USDA waivers, we've been able to even go beyond that to give them the weekend meals and give them meals during the Thanksgiving break and the winter break and upcoming spring break. So um, it, has, it has not stopped. Um, I am so thankful, Becky, to have an amazing staff. Um, the managers, the food service workers have been extremely dedicated to our community and our students. And um, that's another benefit too. We're able to serve the babies. And I, we receive emails from parents saying, uh, my one-year-old or two-year-old is enjoying the baby carrots and how it has just really helped their household. Um, and so that's been our goal. We have just, uh, we started the year off. My theme for the year was be like water from the Bruce Lee quote. <laughs> and uh, we have been, uh, it's some days it has been uh, a raging, raging waters and other days it's been a nice settling stream. So we take it um, how we can take, how we can get it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, tell us just a little bit about your district. How many schools do you have? How many students? So in Fulton, we have 95 schools. Uh, we have a little under 90,000 students and, um, our free and reduced rate is around 43%. Uh, it went down about 1% or two, um, due to, uh, the COVID happening and, uh, being able to afford parents the ability to receive meals at no cost. So um, just slightly down, but not much. Um, since we started COVID, we have been able to reach over three, we've been able to serve over three million meals through our food stop, which is our, our weekly pickup distro, through our weekend meals and holiday meals, and also through our, um, um, our uh, I guess the face-to-face -face sending the kids, sending food home with the kids for the weekend that are in school. Uh, we've been able to serve meals while, when schools were closed. There are, there are times when individual schools had to close and we still, we, we kept it going. Um, a little bit more about our district. We have a little bit on, under 700 employees and um, each, each, each school of course has its own school nutrition manager. Yeah. I mean, you guys are a big district in, in you're a big part of that community. And, and I know that one of the big reasons that you were given that fame honor was that you've, you've really reached into the community and, and, and integrated that food service program into that community. You've talked a little bit about how you guys have even expanded that during COVID, but can you talk about some of the things that you've been working on? Sure. So what I really am excited that we've been able to continue a lot of the programs that we're used to providing to our students and, um, some of those are the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program, which is a grant provided by USDA. Uh, we've, we've been able to continue with Farm to School, and which is being able to um, support our Georgia farmers and um, by providing an extra fruit or vegetable um, for students in schools that meet those requirements. So the main thing that we wanted to do was make sure that we were able to continue as many operations as we could. We have, uh, we continue with our promotions. So we just celebrated National School Breakfast Week. And so that's been amazing. And uh, we celebrate National School Lunch Week and as well as our, our, our normal promotion. So the main thing that we wanted to do was just make sure that we continue the normalcy as much as possible. 
We are looking forward to getting back to the fun things that we used to do with the kids, which is our taste test and our food show. Um, our food show started in 2015 and we had it every year where we bring students from, from different schools into one facility and they were able to walk around and, and taste test foods and vote on their favorite items. And those items ended up on the menu. So we're looking forward to, um, once things hopefully settle down, to bringing back the fun things that we did with our, um, with our students. We continue to do our, our food drives where we collected cans for the um, shelters and homeless in the area. Um, of course, with the waiver, we're able to feed the community, um, we'll feed the feed students in the community that do not attend our, sco our schools. So we have found uh, other partners that have helped us with that. We uh, partnered with the Atlanta Community Food Bank over the summer to, they were providing food boxes and so they utilized um, our facilities to help distribute those food boxes as well. Um, we utilized our bus transportation system to get meals out to the community, um, to make it as convenient as possible for the parents. During the time when students were beginning to get back into school, we were not fully face-to-face -face yet. We, um, our bus transportation service team, um, loaded up food and took the food right out to the community. So we, we wanted to make sure that um, while our community efforts looked a little different this year, that we still maintain those um, connections and partnerships. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and part of that connection and partnership is you, you have a big district, so you have a big food service staff too. And it, it's been a very challenging year to be an employer and to manage people and to, to keep people inspired and safe. Um, how have you been working with your team to kind of cope through all the chaos and the changes that have been in the past year? Well, Becky, I'll tell you, um, we have had a significant amount of change with our staffing. Uh, we've, we've endured a lot of staffing challenges, um, staffing shortages, and just the challenge to retain a lot of our staff. Um, those that know school for food service well know that you typically, once you have an employee, they stay with you until retirement. So a lot of our seasoned employees um, chose not to return during this season um, because of COVID and ex impossible exposure. So that left us with a lot of vacancies. But I'd tell you what also impacted us was um, where the Marta bus line pulled some of their um, stops. So stops or areas where our employees take the bus, the bus line was not available. And so because they, had, they didn't have access to uh, transportation, they had to end their um, relationship with us. And so those are the type of challenges that, we, that were unexpected that we had to continue to pivot from. And um, in cases where individual schools would close, we would send that staff to another school um, other schools have, have, we have spread out staff in multiple schools where we uh, maybe not have had, we, I guess the number of enrollment of students were, were low. And so we were able to spread the staff out to areas where they were needed. And so we just really had to be creative with our staffing this year. Um, I hope that next year we'll bring about a different change, but I will say through it all, they just, they hung in there. The ones that, that stayed with us, they literally stayed with us. And um, we were able to afford new opportunities for, um, for staff. So we brought in some new people. And so next year, our goal will be to look for those creative staffing opportunities and work to retain the staff that we have right now and um, bring about, to help bring about those strong, dedicated employees that we, are, that we have now and we're used to having. Yeah. And part of that is, is maintaining a, a good culture and, and positivity and what can be a very challenging time. And I read online, I think it was through SNA, that you had found a lot of inspiration in your mother. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? So my mom got me started in school nutrition. She is the reason I am here today. Um, she worked in our district um, and I grew up in Fulton County as well. And so she was a, a media specialist. And she was such an inspiration through her work. And even as a media specialist, she continued to work in the community as well. And um, she told me one day that she, she met the director of school nutrition at a training that she 
was a part of. And she told me I should give it a try. And I was like, no, I was, I was still in college. And um, I gave it a try. And I loved it and never left. I started out as a manager and uh, just continued to stay with it. I loved interacting with the kids. Because I always say, I could never be a teacher because that is a true calling. But I wanted to be around kids. And I feel like this gave me that opportunity. I didn't have to worry about educating them, but I could, I could impact them in a meaningful way by just um, providing them with ways that they can eat healthy, how they can have their favorites in moderation, and you know how to love food. And so that's what I have. Um, that has been my goal since I, I've come. And she just really instilled in me just the, the need to provide a service to people. And uh, she continues to do, to do that to this day. She is always shocked when I mention her. <laughs> <laughs> and she just never, she, she always says, I just didn't know that I had that impact. She's very, she's very shy when she wants to be, but um, she has had such a phenomenal impact on my, on my life and my growth. And she continues to do that to this day. So I love her to death. <laughs> and I think that one of the positive things that's come out of this pandemic is that people who necessarily didn't always get the spotlight did. And, and I think child nutrition, particularly in schools, really kind of shown through this whole thing. And I think you were incredibly correct about saying that you're able to make an impact on so many people and, and teaching them and helping them learn healthy habits and, and feeding them in a time when you don't always necessarily know when your next meal is going to come. So thank you so much for all the work that you have done and your team. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another thing we did, we um, started this year was a staff spotlight. We um, wanted to, during this time, morale can be at a, at a, at a uh, it can be a challenge. And so finding, because I couldn't get out to the schools and see them all the way we used to and, and interact and hug and talk about the family. I wanted to um, find a way to um, share, share our appreciation with everyone. And so now we have a monthly staff spotlight where we, where staff are, stellar staff are nominated and they are highlighted on our, on our social media pages, our school nutrition website. And that has just been a phenomenal, it's been received phenomenally well by our staff. They just appreciate the recognition. And they appreciate the fact that we know um, how hard they're working and that we're taking the time to share with everyone else how hard they're working. Yeah. So last question, I want you to look to fall 2021 and maybe a return to somewhat more normal. Are there some things that you guys have done or implemented um, during the COVID time that you think will stay whenever things get back to a little bit normal? Or do you think things will go back to kind of how you were pre-COVID? We've done, there are a lot of things that, the waivers afforded us of a lot of opportunities this year that normally we would not have explored. Um, I would hope that, um, if the waiver, right now we have an extension of the waivers until September 30th, and we're extremely thankful about that. That will get us through the summer months. And, um, but if they were to continue, we would, um, I would like for us to, if the waivers were to continue, this is what I want. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want the opportunity to feed the students that don't normally eat with us the menu items that were that we were just launching. So we just launched our salad bars. We had just launched our um, Asian bowl line where we had uh, different bowl items every day. Uh, we just launched a lot of self-service opportunities for our students. And I want the opportunity for those kids to try our foods without having to worry about paying for them. So if the waivers are extended and we come back face to face, I look forward to the opportunity to reach those students that, um, that have not given us a try and to be able to share with them those great experiences that they have not experienced at all in, in schools. So I look forward to that. I just look forward to, uh, we, we try new things all the time. That one thing my staff can say is she always comes up with something. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so um, I'm sure that there are a lot of good things. I follow a lot of districts as well to see what they're doing um, because there's no need to reinvent the wheel. We're all doing great work for our, for our kids and for our communities. So sharing what we're doing uh, and allowing others to see what we do um, and it, it pays off well. And so I just look forward to, again, trying those new things. I look forward to new menu items. Um, our meal service can, can and will be different next year in terms of how we service our kids. Um, we'll go back to the self-service, I think, and the way we account for meals will be different too because we have, we've been able to set up a lot of contactless um, uh, opportunities for our students, and so that is one that I know that we will continue into next year. Awesome. Well, it's been so fantastic to catch up with you. Thank you again for everything that you do. Please stay safe. And I can't wait to hear what you guys are working on next. Absolutely. Stay tuned.